You are now listening to the Salty Virgins Podcast. Welcome to the Salty Virgins Club, not war effort, boys. Uh, I'm here with Kevin and Jackson. Patrick's off to the war soon. Uh, yeah, I think he leaves on Tuesday. He's shipping off uh, to join the front lines um, tomorrow morning, or Tuesday morning. Yeah. So, uh, prayers up for the boy. Hopefully we get to see him again. But, you know, he's I doing mean, a he good has, thing. He has a beautiful vacation planned around the wartime efforts. So, it, well, you know, <laughs> we just yet to see what that's going to look like. But I'm excited to see uh, how that shapes up for them. And hopefully he can push Ukraine to a, to a few victories, you know? Patrick's known they already for, seem to be winning. Patrick's actually. a world-renowned tactician. Little know if you know this, but... His uh his art and skill for planning and deciphering a battlefield is little to none. So second to none. There you go. Yep, I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, Pat's going to Europe, so we won't see him for a month. Uh, he's going he to walk around. He is a get abducted. All oh, that yeah. uh, intel- well, engineering intelligence. Oh, I hope we figured. I hope we followed the right forms with his company for, uh, <laughs> going overseas. Yikes! And he probably That's- is fine. Uh, it's not that big of a deal usually. There's certain companies that's a big or companies countries it's a big deal, but most it's fine. So I hope he did. He'll have so to make his uh, missions into Russia covert, but besides that, he'll be good. <laughs> Pat being part of like the CIA is so funny. <laughs> Just simply a whole. You think, you think it's Pat? It's actually Kara. No comment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That's none the wise. So ways are the best cover. No one's ever fucking in them. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Somebody did post Subway on their Instagram story the other day, and they're like, "This is great." And I was like, "I'm gonna unfollow you right now. I can't. I can't do this. I can't do this." So, Pat and Kara are going to Europe. It's freaking Lucas and Morgan are in Hawaii, and everyone's doing like super fun things right now. Kind of sick about it. You know, yeah. I Emma's. Back, I came back from Indiana. Yeah. So. <laughs> Emma's. On, I was wondering on where you were. You didn't say anything. He's like, now nah, that makes sense. I want to tell him when I was in Indiana either. <laughs> I was so mad about it. <laughs> I. I mean, it was fine. Uh, it was nice to meet Kayla's family, like his, her father's side of the family, and like her grandma's ninety fifth birthday, which is really fucking old, and she's like still remarkably sharp for a ninety five year old woman. So that was cool. It was just like, you know, the, the hassle of going to Indiana for an extended weekend is not ideal. Um, especially, I had not a Jordan level travel day, but I did. Uh, we got to the airport on the way out Thursday after work. Flew out late, flew Allegiant. Apparently, you know, Allegiant for some reason flies direct Jack's to Indianapolis. So that works. Sure. Um, and they're the only airline that doesn't. So. The American meth pipeline jacks the Indiana. <laughs> and apparently exclusively families go on those flights, which we'll get to. Um, but, but So we, we get to the airport. And we, I, I get to the airport relatively early because it was through rush hour traffic. And I have lounge access. Kayla and I were kind of hungry. I was like, we can get there, eat a couple drinks, whatever. We get to the airport at like 6, flights at 9, expect to breeze through security. You know, we have a, we check a bag, uh, and I made this mistake. We should have just, uh, I should have just packed a bag and faked it as a carry on, like I used to do with like Spirit flights. And Kayla should have mm-hmm. just done like a like this mini suitcase like um, carry on that you pay for. Um, mm-hmm. But I was like, whatever, I'll just pay to check one bag. Not that big of a deal. Uh, Allegiant doesn't, they, you know, since they do one flight out of Jacks like every two day, every you know, two flights a week uh, to Indianapolis two flights a week returning i guess there's not that many so they just mm-hmm. like don't staff the counter very often uh so they was no one at the counter until two hours before departure so kale and i waited before someone was even able to check us in for an hour and then we had to wait for the couple fucking families that were somehow in front of us that all did not have their bag situation figured out did not have their documents ready after an hour of waiting in line that's um, that's a hell. Checking like, why are you at the airport car seats, with no tickets? <laughs> just like, and I mean, I don't know. Not to be, not to be mean, but man, they they look how you expect 
them to look as... I've been to Indianapolis yeah, a bunch yeah. of times. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a bunch of times. Those people are ugly. So, anyway, um, it was fine. That happened. We get through. We breeze through security. Get up to the lounge at, like, 7.45. Apparently, the lounge closed at 7. So, we could have had, like, 30, 45 minutes to, like, eat and, like, pound a drink. Instead, fucking close. So, I was like, whatever. We go to Chili's. I'm just going to spend money. doesn't matter. Our flight gets Kev- delayed. Just keeps pushing, getting delayed, getting delayed. The only time this has ever happened to me in my life where a flight got delayed past 11 p.m., it got, it got canceled. Because the flight time of the crew comes into play because they've been flying all day and all this shit. So it's like, it's, it's really a pain in the ass. Um, the last departing flight out of Jacksonville was at like 8.30. Besides our flight, which was at, at the end scheduled to depart at 11.15. And you know what? If this flight gets canceled, like I'm not going to be able to go. Because we're not, we're going to have to pay like $800 to rebook. Because Allegiant, I don't think Allegiant's going to put on another flight. Maybe they would reschedule for the next morning Anyway, I was like, I just want to go home and sleep in my own bed tonight. And then, you know, at 11 o'clock, they get a call. Our plane is touched down and is taxiing. The gate. <laughs> and I was like, ah. Kevin about fucking threw up. Because I was texting him. Because I had just, at, like, offhandedly asked him, oh, how's Indianapolis? Because I figured he would, he'd have been there. I texted you were like 10. Yeah. I guess, yeah, about 10 over there. Uh, so I figured he had gotten, like, there. And he was like, I spent $120 at the airport Chili's. I'm in hell. I got four beers. <laughs> Marge, You baby. got four beers and some chicken tenders. Yep, chicken tender, the, you know, the crispers, whatever, and some Marge. The honey chipotle chicken t- crispers. Big time. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, at that point, you know, regardless of what was going to happen, I was at peace with either not going, selfishly. Or with just getting rescheduled to the morning and just, like, sleeping in my own bed and then just getting out to the airport early and just, like, restarting the day. And instead, we board a flight at 11.15, land at 1-ish, Allegiant being fucking Allegiant, you know, the bags don't even show up. Our flight, uh, like, leaves off the sign at the carousel, like, after 30 minutes of us waiting by the carousel, 30 minutes later, the first bags begin. So I don't get my rental car until, like... 215. There's only one rental car person working the whole thing because they just kind of leave people overnight for those kinds of flights. And I didn't mm-hmm. get it until like 3, 315. And of course it snowed on the drive over. Cause fuck oh, f- <laughs> brother. So, Indiana was fine after that, uh, except for the fact that I got food poisoning. So I'm still You got food poisoning? Violent, violent food poisoning. Oh, the boy was down bad. Uh, we stayed at a we stayed at a quality inn, which was actually pretty nice. Like, good room. It was quality? Uh, Besides for the breakfast, which is, I'm assuming, the culprit of the poisoning, uh, <laughs> it was Saturday. Did I fly back on Sunday? Yeah, it was uh, Saturday. And the morning, we just we ate breakfast. Was, uh, Friday, we had breakfast with Cracker Barrel. It was fine. I know you have your aversions to Cracker Barrel, but Cracker Barrel makes a damn fine breakfast. I have no aversions. It's my wife who has the aversions. Oh. I love Cracker Barrel. <laughs> okay, my bad. I remember Listen, they were call it Nigger Barrel, and I'd still be there. Related. They're mostly, like, racism related. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> like I said, they could call it Nigger Barrel, and I'd be fine with it. It's fine. It's real good. They make love a damn fine breakfast. Right. So day two, it's like, you know what? Fuck it. We get breakfast at the hotel. It looks fine. They had like a decent spread. Waffle maker. Looked like, you know, a standard continental breakfast. Hotel breakfast. Yeah. Like hot, hot breakfast though. I was like, okay, cool. Eggs. I, I think, I think it was the eggs. The sausage looked a little bit questionable and my pig ass just kind of fucking ate them still. The eggs looked fine, but some about eggs made in mass quantity. It just it's, feels like an easy culprit. Yeah, the sausage, it's, at least you know, is cooked all the way through. They're just reheating it. The eggs, they got to do some shit to you, and they're going to fuck it up. And it was probably what? that fucking powdered egg. Stuff. I was about to say, they're powdered eggs, because, like, that's the only way you can make that many fucking eggs. Yeah, so... You and know, make them look like that. We went and did, you know, did some family shit, and then went and had lunch. And I ordered, like, a salad before we had lunch at this pizza place, and I was like, excited for food. And then when the salad came, I was like, man does not i don't feel like eating and i was like i don't never you know how like kayla when we're on a new orleans trip she was like oh yeah. i'm kind of nauseous i don't want to eat she gets like that all the time i never feel that way very foreign to me <laughs> you when put food in front of me i'm eating it when i have stomach issues i just like go to the bathroom and just like die and then resolve myself and then that's fine this is like a new feeling but it was just, like low-grade nausea the whole time i was like damn i don't want to eat like bad and then it just kept getting worse and then at night there was like a party that all the family went over to one of them has like a sick house like bought a mm-hmm. barn and then just like completely sure. renovated it 
and it's like a fucking buck. sick sick house now <laughs> on all this property it's actually really cool um but anyway i'm there i'm just like not not feeling it tried to like just grab like a beer just to kind of like whatever i'm gonna relax get through it and by the time like dinner comes i, I go down to the bathroom in the workshop which is the, the bottom of the barn mm-hmm. and i have a just a near-death experience <laughs> i guess a, a slight a slight this is gonna get a little bit gross but it's it's funny it's content so uh i'm i'm on the toilet you know you, you get a little bit nauseous right and my issues usually go down not up right mm-hmm. so that's what i'm expecting and i'm kind of working through that it's hurting and then that wave of nausea hits and i'm a i've talked about this before i'm not like a i'm not built to puke i'm not mm-hmm. like jackson i don't well actually i would say i scream vomit but jackson makes me look better because no one scream vomits like jackson scream nope. vomits but <laughs> i am an nope. ugly ugly puke and there is uh a scream component to it for sure <laughs> i hate puking I've, I've never been good at it i've never done it a lot like i never got sick a lot as a kid uh, it was like allergy shit, but not like bleh, nausea, whatever. Because despite all my shitting, I'm, I have a good stomach for that. Uh, but this was not the case. So that's like going through, and I'm kind of going through it, trying to be as like quiet as possible. Because I'm downstairs, but still, like, you know, it's not exactly quiet. And then I kind of hit this moment of indecision where I have to oh, shit no. again. And then as I'm shitting again, I'm nauseous. And when you're in that kind of flux state, you don't necessarily have the most control over both ends as your body is kind of like convulsing. <laughs> So there's a moment where, you know, you're, you're not sure what's going on. And you have to kind of make a decision. you shit on the floor? I didn't, but there was a slight, you know, sometimes you don't exactly know what's going on in that situation. You're trying to control as much as you can. And there was a mm-hmm. moment where there was a possibility where I thought I might have made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> as I was vomiting and, you know, and because I'm like, I have, like, shirt off, but I wasn't able to get, like, all... Because I'm, like, I have to wear these things after, so I can't soil them. The <laughs> Drenched in sweat. Close so, off. yeah, it's it's bad experience, right? Like, anyway. So, uh, when uh, Ky- Kyle's, like, cut, came down, he kind of knew that I was going through it. He came down, and he was like, how's it going? I was like, I'll be out in a sec. And I came out, and I kind of, like, told him, I was like, I'm going to do, like, a quick spin. I, I, like, inspected myself, felt fine. I'm like, I'm going to do a quick spin because I'm not confident that I'm clean completely. He was like, do a spin. <laughs> and I did a spin, and then it was like one more. He's like bend over a little bit, and he was like, "All right, you're clean." Thank fucking god. So okay, good, great. I feel that better. I'm I'm clean, all good. I feel good for the next like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back downstairs, round two. But at this point, I'm just kind of like growing up, so it's more simple, but not good for me. And then it hits to a point where Kyle's being bothered by something too. So he has gone stairs to the, downstairs to the shop bathroom to figure something out. And this upstairs housing component has two bathrooms. One is in the center of the fucking living room. It's more of oh, like a no. the door. It's like an ornate old style door. It says office on it. It's more of like a, oh, wow, aesthetic. Like, it's going mm-hmm. in there. You kind of like pee or to wash up. It's like not a bathroom that has any privacy. The other is the master. Besides the sh- oh, no. shop bathroom downstairs. So, and the master, of course, has two barn do- doors. One that opens the living room, one to the, to the bedroom. So I just got to dive into the master fucking slam these doors shut there's a dog that is so nervous and hates everyone being there that was hiding in the bathroom but i had to like make peace with and step into the shower so the dog could escape so it didn't fucking like piss itself in the bathroom because i'm there and it doesn't know me and then i just ruined their master bathroom oh man as clean as i could be but it was just like the worst i this is family that like i'm like oh i'll get to socialize with them tonight it'll be a good opportunity to like you know, that's where I shine. I'm not like a, I'm not really like most of them, but I shine in those social situations where drinking is involved because mm-hmm. I can really just kind of latch on and make conversation. And then I spent the whole time just alternating between shitting and puking and all of their bathrooms available. <laughs> <laughs> just shit on their house and then left. And I've been, I've been feeling bad since, like gradually better, but still today I'm kind of like touch and go. Like I've been able to like eat food today, but this, re- they really did me in. I've been in hell the last couple. Fortunately, my body fucking nutted up for the flight, the two-hour direct flight home. Thankfully, the flight was direct, and I was good, but when I got home, it was was not not good. (laughs) So, anyway, that that was my weekend. What'd you say? The the virus called the ceasefire for the flight. (laughs) Exactly, and you know what? I'm thankful for that. Um, I mean, it was, all things considered, it was a really, really, really awful experience for me. 
but everything ended up being completely clean. And, you know, so I don't think I did any damage to anything or anybody's things. But there was plenty of moments that I really didn't think that was the case. So it was very traumatic for myself. Dude, why do yeah. fluids yeah. are just melting a hole in their in septic tank? <laughs> that is a different issue. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like somebody else's fucking problem. <laughs> so, anyway, that was my weekend. Did you I, had a craw- this weekend? I went to a crawfish boil. Ooh, buddy. Um, that sounds sick. Yeah. And then... So, I submitted my bar app last week, like I told you guys. So, Emma was like, oh, let's go out and celebrate, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, cool. There's a new restaurant. It's black-owned, blah, blah, blah. It's like a... It's my style. It's French-inspired with, like, southern twist to it. So, I'm like, all right, let's go here. This should be really good. You know, it's always people there, whatever. It's right up the street from our house. So, we go. And, like, I'm excited. They got, like, a duck salad, and then there's, like, the saffron seafood chowder, and Emma got her lobster roll, and I was like, oh, this is this is great. And then food got there, and I took a bite of the duck, which was, and this is not me dumpstering a black-owned business. I do want the best for these people. But I took a bite of this wildly overcooked and then cold duck, and I was like, it doesn't taste like anything at all. And I was like, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the problem. <laughs> then I take a bite of the soup. And the soup is phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> it's simply phenomenal. So I go back to the duck, and I'm like, damn, this really doesn't taste like anything. And duck is a game bird. It's really hard to make it taste like nothing. Like, it's really hard to do that. So then Emma starts eating her lobster roll, which was strangely presented. Uh, it was fried lobster, I don't know if like, I've like, had fried lobster. I've never had deep fried lobster in my life. I've never, like, I, it's funny because when we were ordering, I said to Emma, I'm not getting the lobster roll because I like my lobster rolls to be lobster, bread, butter, and you chives. And that's fry it. lobster. I, you shouldn't. I, inarguable, you shouldn't. <laughs> I agree. So, she's like, it's really dry. And I was like, yeah, that'll happen when you (laughs) fry (laughs) lobster. (laughs) That'll fucking happen. I promise you. (laughs) So, she's like, I wish there was, like, more sauce or something to help it out. And then she, like, bit into the bread. Because it was, like, big chunks of lobster. So, it was, like... I paid thirty dollars for this fucking sandwich. The lobster wasn't even just like I'm. Ex- I'm envisioning a tail fried a whole and plopped well, in a bun. That would have been sick. I would right? be cool with that. <laughs> no, it was like chunks. So it was like you could tell there was some claw, and then there was some, okay. Like, they just like chunks. minced up some meat and fried it. Uh, this yeah, is, this is this is not good. And then she was like, "Here, taste the bread." This is the most expertly toasted and salted and buttered <laughs> piece of bread I've ever had. It was so good. And it was just like, so they just ruined, like, the important parts of the meal. And we're just like, hey, the details, we're going to get those fucking right. <laughs> the meat? The thing, like, the thing you come here for? Nah, that's, that's just going to suck. Because <laughs> I was like, I was hesitant, because I'm always hesitant of, like, lobster rolls that aren't in the Northeast because people do too much. Yeah. I, I said it, I was like, they do too much, I'm good, like... I don't want a steak. I don't want anything else. I'm just going to get the duck salad and the soup. Because the soup sounded really good. It had lobster and crawfish and shit in it. And just like... It was like a 50-50 experience. Because it was like... Huh. Parts of this were incredible. And then the other parts of this... They should throw them off the menu immediately. If it, yeah, if it's a cold day and you want some soup... Great place to go. If you're looking for a lobster roll... Horrendous. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's not a good lobster roll in the area. It really sucks. Because it's I mean, just I'm not like surprised it's fucking Mississippi. Listen, there's so much good seafood. Well, yeah, there's... I, mean, I assume there's good seafood because you're off the Mississippi River, but like specifically lobster. No, I don't. I don't, I don't I'm, I'm not surprised there's not any good lobster. There's Gulf lobsters, right? Yeah, yeah they always might be literal cockroaches. Yeah, it's fine. We eat shrimp. It's fine. Crawfish. Crawfish might actually be cro- cockroaches for all I know. Delicious. Uh... Extra butter on mine, please. And the crawfish this year are so big. It's so nice. That can't be a good sign. Oh, no. They're <laughs> definitely going to rise up at some point. But 
Oh, buddy, are they delicious. Global warming is just going to make crawfish giant and sentient. Fuck it. If that's how I go out, fuck it. Yeah, I'll probably get, I'm fine getting strangled by a crawfish. Or getting yeah. my head lopped off when, by one of the claws. I don't even know if their claws are that strong. Like, I know lobster claws are strong, but I don't know if crawfish claws are strong. I've never actually battled a live crawfish. That's not true. That's not true. Uh, they can only do so much damage. They are not, they are just simply not that big. Well, so yeah, they're very tiny, they're full not. of shit. So like, really, they are full of I shit. I love. They listen, I would die over a fucking crawfish boil, uh, just yeah. in general. The, but the crawfish like, boil facing a crawfish incredible. in the wild has to be like they got to be wild pussy. They're just not big enough. I've seen like you know, I've seen some quote unquote big crawfish, and then the thought like I I could step on it still. It'd be one of those <laughs> yeah. like crabs are fucking annoying because they can hurt. But like mm-hmm. crab, like some crabs are massively large, and we're not talking yes. about those. We're talking about the crabs to see at the beach that people are scared of. Like at the end of the day, if I needed to, I can take yeah, one you on. get business. I'd rather not. Like those coconut crabs in Hawaii, those no shot. Yeah, no Fuck shot. Those. Fuck those things. <laughs> There's some deep sea crabs that are not to be trifled. Yeah, the Japanese uh, spider crabs and shit, no shot. Yeah, but. Yeah, crawfish. Run of the mill beach crabs, which I'm like, I think those are kind of what crawfish would be like. Yeah. Crawfish crawfish. rich. The river based? Yep. Yep. Freshwater? Yeah, they're freshwater. And full of poop. Yeah, that was basically all I knew about the Muslim Jackson. The the tiny and full of poop. Yep. I mean, that's really all you need to know. Do you guys Uh, suck out the brains? Yes. Excellent answer. Yes. I don't know if Jess. Okay. I, I do it select. I don't do it on every crawfish, but I do it selectively. Too much of it, I think, is a little bit. Of, it's one of those things that I do in uh, moderation. It's a little bit overwhelming for me, but it is. I I didn't used to do that until my recent trip to New Orleans. I was like, mm-hmm. I think I got it. Everyone was doing it. I was like, all right. <laughs> and you know what? It, it, it's gross to think about, but it's delicious. It is delicious. That's the thing about fucking. So I don't like mussels or like clams and shit, but all the other seafood. Yeah, but you you put a little bit of fucking butter, and some Tabasco mm. on it, salt. Mm. You know how I am and weird in particular about things like oh, between two crackers, pow, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what I need to do because my whole thing is like an oyster kind of the crackers has cut a, the consistency issue. I was about to say it kind of t- like feels like a booger in your mouth, especially club crackers. Yeah, that's a that's a polite way to put it. Oh yeah, like I, I can eat them I, if you season them right. I'll still eat them like without crackers. But if you put a little butter, Tabasco, and then in like a cracker, like a sandwich, mm-hmm. it's pretty good. I can probably get there. likes to do like oysters, and Kayla just like fucking takes them off the fucking grill and dresses them up. She's just like a fiend when the oysters come out. So I just have to kind of like be near her, and she'll just feed me fucking like <laughs> seasoned up. I think it works out. It's always good. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not normally in on the oyster, and everybody around me here is like, yeah, I love oysters. I'm like, I will not eat those boogers, thank you. Thankfully, they're like fifty cents a piece or like a dollar a piece, so I don't have to like worry about it. Oh, they're crazy! I never get them at restaurants. They're crazy expensive. See, here they're not because they're never really available. But even even a dollar a piece, that is not enough food. Like a dollar a piece. <sighs> good price 50 cents a piece like i could see doing it as like an appetizer thing for 50 cents a piece a dollar really a piece even used. if i'm trying to get full off oysters i gotta eat like 20? 25 30 yeah. oysters like you know but i don't 50, think 50 cents a piece anybody's can make it happen but at a dollar a piece i'm better off just getting anything else you know yeah you could go get the oyster entree the oyster entree is not gonna have that many oysters but it might have other things the, I'm, the point I'm making is I only eat oysters when, like, people make them at home. Because you can buy them cheaper. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't make it do any of the effort. I help clean. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. All hands mm-hmm. on deck, but I don't really do any of the... I'll supervise and drink a beer. Throwing them on the grill is not that hard, but shucking them and, and, you know... I can't shuck an oyster. Can't do it. Probably need to learn. I've never been needed chef. to introduce because people are always, like, fine with doing it. So... I, there's like three cool, more things I got. Cool oyster shucking knives, like you know, like one they do. That's yeah, true. they got like pearl handle ones and stuff. Uh but that's probably one of the last things I need to 
learn how to do is shuck oysters and like open clams. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it'll be that hard. There's probably a way to do it efficiently, which is there is. There absolutely to, is. Like, it's just prep work and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Scott loves his. I mean, he can he can down twelve in in about thirty seconds. Like just crack them open, get them in, just done. Yeah, that Another sounds about. Up. Yeah. That sounds like your father. I'll admit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to go to Houston and hang out with Scott. Me and Scott 